Bible says in 1 John, And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at, at his coming. He says, the reason why you need to buy in him, the reason why you need to do these things to mortify the members, to put on the new man, is that when you appear with him in glory, when you appear, you may have confidence and not be ashamed. There's going to be some people that day saved. That's not going to change. But they're, going to, they're God's children, but they're going to stand there and it's going to start to slowly dawn on them that they wasted their opportunity. And you know what? They're going to stand up and they're going to give an account and they're going to have to hang their head. And that realization is going to hit them like a ton of bricks. <clears throat> I wonder how long it will take a person like that to figure out that the preacher was right. In that moment, how long will it go through their mind? You know what? The preacher was right. I should have mortified my members. I should have gotten out of fornication. I should have put off the old man. I should have walked after Christ. I should have done those things. So the question is, you know, how much of your work will abide? We're all going to have works that burned up. The wood, hay, and stubble there, I believe that's just the things, the kind of things we have to do in this life just to survive. The kinds of things that, you know, wood, hay, and stubble, those are all useful things. They're not necessarily the most valuable things. But they all, have, they all could serve a purpose. But they will burn up. The question is, will you have anything left over that you did for Christ in your life, outside of your job, outside of just doing the things that you had to do in this life to survive? Will there be anything left over? You know, I heard a preacher say this once a while back, and it's always kind of stuck with me. The fact that, it, it, you know, if it's, if it's this literal where there's going to be a fire that burns up our works, I can't explain how that could be. But let's say, okay, and whatever's left over in that fire is yours. If you can go through and you can find the gold and you can find the silver and you can find the precious stones that remain of your works that are burned up, those are yours. Those are your rewards, right? But I wonder how many people are going to get down and start to look through that ash and realize that's all they have. It's just ash. Can you imagine walking around heaven and everybody else has just got crowns and gold and silver and precious stones and all you've got is ash? Maybe you've got a whole wheelbarrow full of ash. I don't know. How careful you'd be, I mean, how careful you'd be with that ash to not let it blow away. It's all you got for all of eternity. That's a sad thought. I wonder, is that what we're going to have when we stand there before God? How many people are just going to realize all they have to offer? The God that saved them, the God that glorified them, the God that, that has set them in His kingdom, all they'll have to offer is smash. That's a sobering thought. At least it ought to be.